We begin uh, recently on a series we're calling Faith for Miracles. Faith for Miracles. And if you uh, didn't hear the first part, it's available. You can go out in the Word Supply and get you a CD, DVD, or you can, the easiest is go online and download it. Won't cost you anything. And get caught up with us. But let's continue in Mark 9 tonight. Mark chapter 9. This is also found in Matthew 17. It's also found in Luke 9. Three different accounts of the same uh, happening. And in Mark 9, <clears throat> the scripture says, verse 2, Mark 9, 2, after six days Jesus takes with him Peter and James and John and leads them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, just them four. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment, his clothes, became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. You, there, there is no amount of Clorox <laughs> that can make anything this white. Glistening. Glistening. I, I know Brother Hagin said uh, uh, there are times that the Lord let him see the glory of God. And he said, he said the closest thing he could uh, describe it, he said, have, have you ever seen bright, bright noonday sunshine reflecting on glistening snow? He said, well, it's brighter than that. <laughs> but that's the, that's the closest thing he could try to describe it with. And that, isn't that what this is saying? It's whiter than any white you've ever seen. Natural on earth. And uh, there appeared to him Elijah with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. Now hold on. How long had it been since Elijah had lived on the earth? <laughs> or Moses? Huh? Centuries. And yet, he's talking to them. Just like you and I here tonight. All the people that have lived in these previous generations before us, when their bodies died, they didn't cease to exist. They still exist. I said they still exist. That's why I don't like the phrase when people say, you know, a loved one died and they say, well, we lost them. You lost them. They act like they don't, and then they talk about them in the past tense, like they don't exist anymore. Well, so they catch themselves and say, "Well, you know, boy, he he always like he likes this." And so, ah, well, he used to like it. I expect he still does. <laughs> we need we need major mind renewal. We need to be more God conscious than we are death conscious. You believe it? And so he's talking to Elijah and Moses. And they're talking to him. If you read the other accounts, they are talking to him about what's, what's about to transpire in his going to the cross and his dying. That's what they're talking to him about. In the, the brilliance of the glory of God glistening off of him. And uh, Peter and James and John were there seeing this. They saw Moses. They saw Elijah. They heard him talking. They saw the glistening light. And uh, afterwards, Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. How many think you'd say, man, it's sure good to be here. <laughs> and what we need to do is make three tabernacles. One for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And he thought he was really doing good in raising Jesus up to the same level of Elijah and Moses. But the Father had to straighten that out. And he spoke right out of heaven. I said he spoke right out of heaven. 
and they heard this voice. To them, it was audible. They heard this amazing, glorious voice, and the Father didn't say anything about Moses, and he didn't say anything about Elijah. <laughs> he said, the, the, the cloud overshadowed them. The voice came out of the cloud and said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. How many think that's excellent advice today? Listen to him. Listen to him. Why? Because if you're listening to him, you're listening to the Father. Because he is the express image of the Father. Everything he said and did is the will of the Father in action. The will of the Father revealed. Keep going. Suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no man anywhere save Jesus only with themselves. So where did Elijah and Moses go? Where, where'd they go? Well, wherever they were, before they came, I suppose. Where's Moses? Is Moses alive? Yes. Is Elijah alive? Yes. Hmm? Yes. How about Paul and Peter and John the Baptist? And, hmm? James and Philip. And, hmm? Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting them, aren't you? You looking forward to meeting them? You reckon they could tell you something? <laughs> I, I, I've enjoyed hearing uh, uh, Brother Jesse Duplantis tell about his experience of getting to go to heaven. And uh, uh, so much of it just bears witness with my spirit. And uh, uh, he said he got to talk to David. And uh, he said, uh, David, he, he said, called him by name. He said, Jesse, something or other. And he said, uh, he said uh, Jesse, you're a musician. Jesse said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he played some. And uh, he said, I, I play a, what did he say? Forget what did he say. He talked about the guitar or the piano. And then he tried to explain to David what it was. He said, David interrupted him and said, I know what it is. Talking about a modern instrument. Now that's revelation, isn't it? We tend to think that they don't know any more than they did thousands of years ago when they walked. Through. Well, they've been around. They, they know. They know. And so Elijah and Moses, they were so up with everything that was going on, they were sent by the Father to talk to Jesus about what is about to happen with Jesus to prepare him and encourage him. And so as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man was risen from the dead. Do you know, some things God does not want published. And, he, and some things he doesn't want them published for a time. Then it's okay to tell it later. Now an experience like this, you'd want to tell somebody, wouldn't you? Huh? Can you think about Peter, James, and John? A week from then, they're over at their folks' house. What are you wanting to say? Man, let me tell you where I was last week. Let me tell you what happened. Hmm? Yeah. But what did the Lord tell them? Yeah. Don't tell it. Don't tell it until after uh, the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. They still don't know what he's talking about. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elijah must first come? And he answered and said, Elijah verily comes first and restores all things, and how it's written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and said it not. But I say to you that Elijah is indeed come, and they have done to him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him. And if you read the other accounts, you'll see he's talking about John the Baptist, who came in the spirit and anointing of Elijah. 
And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. No doubt whether they saw it or not, there still was this glory on, on him and about them from this experience. Something caused the people to rush over to him. And when they did that, he asked the scribes, uh, what question ye with them? And you can see from the other accounts that they were, um, the scribes were grilling the disciples because they had tried to minister to this boy and could not get him healed, could not get him set free. It was a failure, if you will, in, in trying to help. And they were exploiting it. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought to you my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he takes him, he tears him, and he foams and gnashes with his teeth and pines away. And I spake to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Said out loud, they could not. <laughs> and he's explaining to Jesus what the commotion is about why the scribes are back and forth with the disciples, what they're talking about. And so Jesus and Peter, James, and John walk down out of the glory into this. <laughs> Strife, unbelief, wrangling, confusion. And uh, Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Unbelief is irritating to faith. And faith is irritating to unbelief. You remember the ten spies wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb? Why? Because faith shows up unbelief. And if you don't want to change, you're not willing to change, then you just want the faith people to shut up. And quit talking about believing for bigger stuff. Because we don't want to hear it. <laughs> and by the, by the like token, unbelief and fear is irritating to faith. Faith is like, come on, let's believe God. Let's don't sit down here and quit. Let's reach up bigger. Let's get bigger. Let's get better. Let's go further. And they're going, I just don't know. <laughs> faith is like, come on. You're just going to sit there and do nothing? Let's go. You know what Joshua and Caleb said? Come on, let's go. We can do it. God's with us. Let's go get it. <laughs> so unbelief and faith are not buddies. <laughs> so he said, bring him, bring him to me. Even if the best have prayed and it didn't work. That doesn't mean it's not God's will for you to have it. Hmm? Amen. Jesus said, bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tore him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. That's not very respectful of Jesus, is it? And he asked the father, how long is it ago since this came to him? Now, I always find this interesting. This, this, this poor kid is over here having a, a seizure, foaming and writhing, and Jesus just uh, casually is having a conversation with his daddy. He said, how long has it been like that? <laughs> <laughs> how many don't believe Jesus ever got shook up and, and lost it? Hmm? He said he's been like that since he was a, a child. And oftentimes it's cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now the man's, he, he's not sure. He, he had hoped that the boy could get helped through Jesus' disciples because they had been getting results and getting people set free. But now because they failed, you can tell he's wondering, well, I don't know if Jesus can do anything either. You might say, well, Jesus, no, they didn't see him like you and I see him. 
They saw him at, at most as a prophet. They saw him as a man, as a preacher, as a minister. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And in essence, he's just he's putting all the responsibility on Jesus. You can tell he's not, he's not acting, like, acting like any of this is up to him or them. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. What did Jesus say? Mark 9, 23 is our text. I took a while to get here, but hmm? what did Jesus say? Jesus said to him, red letters. Do you like red letters? If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. I want you to say it out loud two or three, four, ten times. All things are possible to him that believes. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believes. Real strong again. All things are possible to him that believes. You believe this? You'll believe her? Then it's possible. It's possible to you. He didn't say all things are possible to everybody. All things are possible to a specific group. Those that believe. Now, now what, he's answering this man. So what's he telling this man? This, this boy, he, he's not a child anymore, but he's been like this for years, and he's, he's writhing on the ground, wallowing, foaming in a terrible way, having some kind of seizure and fit. And what did Jesus just get through telling this man? What did you just get through telling him? It, it, did he tell it? Did he just get through telling him, it's possible for you and your boy to have what you want. It's possible for your boy to be completely free and never have this again and have a normal life. Is he telling him it's possible? It's possible. And what is Jesus telling him it hinges on? His believing. Now this is not what modern religion teaches. Modern religion teaches, if, if, if it doesn't teach that the age of miracles is past, it teaches God could do it if he decided to, but it's all up to his mysterious will, and we really don't have much to do with it. You can pray and say, God, if it be thy will, well, how would you know if it's his will? Well, if it happens, may I guess it was his will. If it didn't happen, I guess that means it wasn't his will. That's not what Jesus said. Is that what Jesus said? That's not what he taught. That's not what he said. Friends, I want you to be on the watch for this. Because it's everywhere that people are saying the Bible teaches, the Bible says, Jesus taught, Jesus says, and, when, and the next thing that follows is absolutely goofy. Just because somebody said the Bible says, the Bible teaches, Jesus taught, where? 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 Where is it? Well, you know, just like Jesus taught, where? When did he ever say such a thing? Where? Where? Well, you know, the Bible teaches, the Bible reveals, and the Bible teaches, and the Bible says this. You ever heard somebody say, the Bible says, and then you spout some goofy something that's nowhere in the Bible? Be on the watch for it, because it's right and left, which is one reason you should read your chapter every day so that you know what is written, right? And you know what's goofy and what's good. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out, and he said with tears, Lord, I believe. Could you help me with this other stuff? <laughs> help my unbelief. 
We talked about this last time. Faith is not pretending. And the Bible talks about unfeigned faith. Definition of feign is pretend. And there's a whole lot of pretending that people call faith. And that's when you see when things, people say they're believing and things don't work. Again and again, it never was faith. It's pretending. And there's no need in pretending and don't ever think about trying to impress other people with your faith. That's foolishness. They're going to find out pretty soon anyway. Trying to impress somebody with your faith is a foolish thing. You might as well get real with God. Right? And if your confidence is not there, don't try to pretend and say a bunch of stuff. Doesn't mean you can't have it. Just do what this man said. Ask for help. Right? Lord, help me, help me get to where I need to be in my faith. But don't play games. Don't pretend. Don't hide. Don't cover. Don't stick your head in the sand. I believe. Help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him and he was as one dead insomuch that many said, He's dead. And Jesus took him up by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. Glory to God. Somebody say, Yea, Jesus. <laughs> Where others failed, Jesus prevailed. Yeah. Reckon it's still that way today. Yeah. Uh, now, something that, uh, t- two major things I want us to get in tonight as the Lord would help us and, and lead us. One is, do you see how much the spirit realm is referred to in this passage. The man knew his son's condition was caused by a spirit. Didn't he? The daddy. He did. And Jesus in dealing with this condition dealt with a spirit. Didn't he? (laughs) Now you hear how quiet it begins to get? Did he or not? Yes. Well, the Bible, t- Jesus told us, if you believe on me, the works I do, you'll do also. And the servant's not above his master. How do you suppose we would do them? Like the master did them. There's not a, a superior way to do it than how the master did it. And if we're going to get results like this, We will have to do it just like he did it. There is no other way. Hmm? And it seems like, as with so many areas, people get in the ditch on one side of the road or the other. Much of the church refuses to acknowledge these things and and, and pretends like they don't exist. They're not real. Some of the church gets in the ditch on the other side of the road and, and, and they talk more about the devil than they do God. And it's all fear-based and scared. Neither of those is right. But in order for us to, to have faith for miracles, to see miracles, we have to acknowledge the reality of the realm of the Spirit. And we've got to become much more aware of the realm of the Spirit. Jesus was aware. I said he was aware of the realm of the Spirit. He was aware of the Holy Spirit. He was aware of angels. He was aware of the Father. He was aware of human spirits. He was aware of evil spirits. And he addressed this spirit directly, personally, didn't he? And commanded it to come out of that boy and leave him. And he did. And the boy was free. 
Now I'm sure if this boy had been diagnosed in the best clinics of our day, they could have given us a name for his condition. Right? But would they have acknowledged that it's a spirit that's back of it? Hmm? What, what would they say about that? They would say, oh, you go to that church. <laughs> is the realm of the Spirit real? It is so real. It is so real. In, in Luke's account of this same happening, I want to read to you from the Weiss translation. In the Luke 9 and 37... Weiss translation. It says, Now it came to pass on the next day, they having come down from the mountain, that a large crowd met him. A man from the crowd shouted, saying, Teacher, I beg you to look with pitying regard on my son with a view to giving him aid, because he's my only child. And behold, a spirit takes him, and he suddenly cries out loud, and he throws him into convulsions accompanying by foaming at the mouth and with difficulty leaves him, disrupting his body functions and shattering his strength. What disrupted his body functions and shattered his strength? A spirit. Spirit influences disrupting the normal function of his body, his brain, his nervous system, his organs, his muscles. Hmm? According to the Bible, all of this physical convulsion stuff was caused by a spirit influence. The contractions of the muscles, the spasms of the nerves, all of these things. And when the spiritual influence was removed, the body was fine. Right. And the brain was fine. Yes. Now we live in an educated society. <laughs> Scientifically enlightened society. And millions of people in this country, they don't believe that at all. They say, oh, that's old archaic Writings back when people were so superstitious and they didn't understand that there were chemical imbalances and that the, the specific nerves in that region of the brain misfire and there's disconnections. Well, maybe it is, but what's behind that? You can't see that under a microscope. Oh, it's such pride to think that we know so much now. <laughs> oh, we're enlightened. We're, you know, man, we know what makes the heart beat. And, you know, the Bible says you do not know what, which way or what causes the child to grow in the womb. And some, some uh, professionals would dispute that now. They'd say, oh, no, we, we can take you to the moment of conception and we can take you through every stage and part of development. Maybe you can, but what causes it to go from stage one to stage two? Oh, it's the mystery of life. You said it right. <laughs> but that mystery, mystery means you don't know. That mystery is spirit. I said it's spirit. It's spirit. The reason you can sit there, sit there right now and nod your head is because behind your eyeballs, inside there, is you, a spirit being. And if the Lord tarries his coming and this body is long buried and decaying, you will still be vibrantly alive and you'll still be you. You'll still have your mind and your faculties because you are not just a body. You see, you see people foolishly Go, you know, they talk about the brain and go, isn't that amazing? Those few, few pounds of gray matter, all of the modern inventions of civilization, have, civilization has come out of those few pounds of gray matter. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. No. Your 
brain is not your mind. Your mind is a part of your spirit, spirit being, your spirit and your soul. Your brain is the organ your mind functions through. And express, we could remove your brain and you'd still have your mind. You just couldn't express yourself in this realm. But you'd still have your mind. You'd still have all your faculties. You'd still be you, know what you know. Out of your body, your body dead and decayed, you still have your mind. Hmm? It'll work better, actually. Get free from all this stuff down here. <laughs> But it said this thing disrupted his body functions and shattered his strength, which is how Weist said it. He said, I begged your disciples to eject him, <laughs> and they were not able. And answering, Jesus said, O oh, unbelieving breed of men and perverted, until when shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here to me at once. And when he was yet coming to him, the demon threw him into convulsions and disrupted his body functions and shattered his strength. What caused it? Their good is influenced spiritually. And evil is influenced spiritually. They both are. God is good. And when you see genuine good expressed and manifested, there's spirit behind it. Holy Spirit. And when you see evil manifested, there's spirit influence behind it. I know the modern world thinks they're educated beyond that, but they're wrong. That's right. It's always been this way. It's just it's reality. It's a realm you can't see and touch and feel with the physical, but just as real. Oh, yes. I said just as real. Amen. There are angels in here right now. I don't go anywhere without mine. How about you? <laughs> and uh, if our eyes were open, we'd be aware. Let's keep going. He said, uh, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were beside themselves with astonishment at the majesty of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we won't have miracles unless we be, are aware of the spirit realm. You can't deal with spiritual things mentally and physically. You can't. Uh, Jesus didn't say, now let's put our minds together. <laughs> huh? It's not mental. And it wasn't physical. They, they, they didn't shake him. Yell at him and spit on him. Hmm? He wasn't the problem. The boy wasn't the problem. It was this wrong spirit. <laughs> uh, go with me to John 3. I tell you what, on your way to John, go, go around about way, go to Acts 23. We'll come back to, to John. I'm believing God for the Lord to help you and me to not be carnal or weird either one. Would you believe with me for that? Like I said, they're in, in, in one ditch or one side of the road or the other. They're either in the ditch of they're so intellectual until if they can't touch it and feel it and explain it and see it under a microscope, it doesn't exist. That just means they're oblivious. 
They are completely limited to their five physical senses and won't even have a, a, a glimmer of an idea of what's really going on until they die. And then it'll all hit them and they'll find out. But it'll be too late for this life when you could have lived in more victory. But Jesus is the ultimate example. Right? There is no better way. There's no superior way. There's no further evolved way of dealing with things and operating than how Jesus did it. Would you agree? He did it exactly. How many agree this man bringing his son, this boy having these seizures, did Jesus deal with it exactly the way it needed to be dealt with? Exactly. So whose example should we aspire to follow? Then we, we need to believe God and, and believe Him to help us make whatever changes we need to make so we are aware like He was aware. He was aware of what the problem was, wasn't He? And He was aware of what the Holy Spirit was telling Him to do about the problem, wasn't He? And He did it and a miracle occurred miracle occurred. Something that no, no man could fix. Said out loud again, all things, all things are, possible are possible to him that believes. Him that believes. All, things all things are possible, are possible to him that, believes. him that believes. In Acts 23.8, I want you to notice this and see if it sounds familiar. Acts 23.8 says, the Sadducees say, there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. <laughs> One fellow said, that's why they were so sad, you see. I reckon you would be. No resurrection? If there's no spirit, what does that mean? What about God? What they think God is. And there's no angel. There's no spirit. If there's no spirit, then when people are dead, if there's no spirit, what else is there? Which is why, see, they thought they were so smart when they came to Jesus with that carefully crafted scenario. They said, teacher, could you help us with this? You know the law says that if a man dies and he has no children, his brother is supposed to uh, take his wife and raise up seed. And, he said, and uh, this happened and, and then the second had no children and so the third married her and he had no children and the fourth and the fifth and how many was it? Seven? Seven. Seven. And then the woman died. And they said, therefore in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Because she was married to all seven of them. Explain that, huh? huh? <laughs> Let me give you the Keith Moore paraphrase of Jesus' response. You are way off. You don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. He went on to say, they don't marry in heaven like down here. And so what does that mean? It's not going to be a deal. It's not going to be an issue. <laughs> There's a lot of people have asked that question. What about this? So and so got remarried and I'm dreading uh, seeing my first wife or second wife or whatever. <laughs> when I get to, not going to be a deal. <laughs> not going to be an issue. People uh, waste a lot of time thinking about things that are just not going to even be relevant later on. But they deny any, can you see this is basically some of the same mentality? If you can't see it and feel it and touch it and experience it down here, it doesn't exist. Sadducees. Well, you know a lot of modern Christians are Sadduceic in their doctrine. At least 
a percentage of the way because you start talking about spirits and angels, you lost them. They're like, ooh. <laughs> Man, it, they don't want any part of it. Hmm? Well, then you'll never be like Jesus. You'll never minister like him and operate like him because he dealt with them. Didn't he? And he, he influenced natural things with spiritual force. He spoke to the wind and waves. Hmm? And they calmed and ceased and stopped. What caused the winds to stop? What caused the waves to lay down? It wasn't natural. It was a spiritual influence. Can spiritual influences affect the physical? They can for evil or for good. This evil influence was disrupting this boy's nervous system and who knows what else in his body. And the power of the Spirit of God cleared him up. Made him free from it. Right? And when that was gone, everything worked right. Everything worked right. Everything worked right. Let's look at another one in, in Luke 13. In Luke 13, before we go to John, look at this. Luke 13, 11, it says there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity, Luke 13, 11. She had a what? She had a what? 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. She's been over and she can't straighten up. Now she functions in life the best she can. Now if she had gone to the clinic could they have given her a name for her condition? Yeah. And I'm not knocking any of that. But would they have diagnosed her as having a spirit of infirmity? They're not trained for that. That's, that's not taught in medical school. Hmm? Hmm? Any, you, you're supposed to spend any time on diagnosing spirits. <laughs> and, and I'm not knocking any of that. I'm just saying it's, so, some people, they get indignant if you suggest there could be something else affecting this. And that's, that's really proud of them. J just because they got a handful of knowledge in this area doesn't mean they know everything about everything. How can you say it? that couldn't be? That can't exist. How long you been around? Where you been? How would you know? And are you going to stand there and say all this in the Bible is just junk? It's just mythology? What are you going to say? Or is it reality? I said, is it reality? Is it real? Now I'm not saying everything's a spirit. But I am saying that Good and evil are influenced by spirit. Hmm? By real spiritual influences. You, can't, you don't see them. They're not physical. They're not material. There's another realm. I said there's another realm. There's another realm. There's another realm. You remember John said uh, the Father, John 4, said the Father seeks worshipers, that God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. And if you look at other scriptures, you'll find spirit is distinguished from flesh. From flesh. People have gotten so far away from this that even the church has tried to turn the gifts of the Spirit into natural things. Go 
to 1 Corinthians 12. Well, I'm, I'm moving too fast, aren't I? Did you finish reading Luke 13? No, you didn't. Go back there. Why was that woman bent over like that? Why? A, infirmity means weakness. Spirit of weakness, how long has she been that way? Do you mean to tell me this spiritual influence has been doing this to her for almost two decades? 18 years. And it's affecting her physically. She can't straighten up. Could in no wise, no matter what she did, she couldn't straighten up. She's bent over, bent over, stooped over. Verse 12, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. <laughs> he wants this to be fixed, doesn't he? Yes. And, and he knows why she's here to start with. Why did she come to the meeting? She heard about things happening. So here she is. He says, dear, she goes, yeah, come here. Come here. Come here. She walked up to him. He said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. <laughs> Glory to God. And verse 13, he laid his hands on her and immediately, right there, right then, she straightened up. And then what'd she do? Glorified God. I guess so. After 18 years of that junk. Glorified God. Glorified God. Glorified God. Healing glorifies God. Not a word is said about her glorifying God those 18 years she stooped over. But when she's released, she glorifies God. Healing glorifies God. Deliverance glorifies God. What must have happened if it was a spirit of infirmity when he said, you're loosed? That thing must have left. Must have left. And when it left, she can straighten up. She can straighten up. <laughs> you believe this or not? Is this mythology? Huh? So you hear so many people say, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's symbolic symbolic you know or if it did happen Jesus is just proving that he is the son of God but then nobody else has that power nobody else could do it. that's not what he said that's not what he said at all and we see it continuing with the disciples in the book of Acts don't we same kind of things and there's history of it continuing all through, generation after generation in the church, under this present day. If you believe it. If you don't believe it, you won't be bothered with it. Hmm? Because all things are only possible for those that believe. And if you don't believe in spirit, and you don't believe in all this, well, you, you, you can't get to it. And you can think that your lack of results proves your belief. But it's your belief that causes your lack of results. In this case, lack of belief. I had a fellow one time come call me to task about some of this healing thing. He said, well, uh, I, we don't believe in that. We don't, I never see anything like that. We don't have anything like that. I said, well, do, do your preachers preach it? Oh, no, no. They tell us that's done away with. That's all gone. I said, isn't that interesting? Y'all don't preach it, and you don't believe it, and you don't have it. We, on the other hand, preach it and believe it, and we got books full of testimony. Have y'all heard any testimonies about these things? Wonder if there's any connection. <laughs> what happened? Immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Keep reading. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. 
He said, there's six days in which men ought to work and them come and be healed, but you don't get healed today. <laughs> How do you do that? How do your eyeballs witness a miracle of compassion? A woman in this 18 years bowed over state and now she's free. Now she's saying glory to God. Now she's running around jumping. And, and, and How do you miss all that? You go, no, 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 no. This is wrong. Wrong day. Wrong day. <laughs> Just like they had a healing day. <laughs> when is their healing day? But you find you got the same thing today. People are so quick to tell you how you can't do it. And how it's not supposed to be done. Not that they ever do it. But they can tell you how not to do it. Keep going. Jesus said, you hypocrite. Called him right out in front of everybody, didn't he? You're a hypocrite. He probably thought, how am I a hypocrite? He tells him, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day take your cow out or your donkey out of the stall and lead him to water on the Sabbath day? <laughs> Verse 16, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound? He didn't just say arthritis. See, we're, we've been so locked in to the natural that people can't see anything else, so there can't be anything else. Sure, the natural's that way. Maybe the symptoms described and maybe some of the cause and effect, maybe that's all exactly right. But there's more to it. There's something behind it too. If you deny the spirit, you lock yourself to what man can do. And thank God for what man has learned how to do, but it's not enough. I said, it's not enough. How quickly can they look at you and say, there's nothing more can be done. It's terminal. It's hopeless. It's incurable. And that's when people generally just start getting ready to die and they just quit. And a lot of times they do. And yet, if what Jesus said is true, then it's possible even when it looks too far gone, too bad, Hallelujah. impossible, it is possible. Yeah. It is possible yeah. if you can believe. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of condition, stooped over, frozen spine after 18 years, do people generally just get better on their own? <laughs> You'd expect it to worsen. But no, she's standing straight as an arrow, hollering glory to God at the top of her lungs. Because a spiritual cause was removed. And when that was removed, she's free. She's free. She's free. And Jesus said, if a thirsty donkey ought to be watered on the Sabbath day, then certainly this dear woman, who's a daughter of Abraham, ought to be set free, ought to be set free from this bondage that Satan has put in her life. How many preachers today would have told this dear woman, just be patient, dear, and bear your cross? You don't know. Maybe you being bent over like that will bring some people to the Lord. You don't, God works in mysterious ways. Mysterious ways. Am I lying? No, they say that. How many people would have told her that it must be the will of God? We don't know why. You don't see Jesus saying such a thing. What did he say? She ought to be loosed. Which is why? He loosed her. He loosed her. He loosed her. He said, you're loosed from this infirmity. And when he said that, spiritual power, spiritual force, come on, are you listening? Came on her and came through her. And when it did, the evil force left. And when it left, she was straight. 
and glorified God, glorified God, glorified God, glorified God, glorified the name of the Lord. Is that what we want around here, saints? Do we want some glorifying of the name of the Lord? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. More and more and more. Hallelujah. Go with me to John 3 now, please. We've been talking about faith for miracles. The word miracle, if you look up the Hebrew words, the Greek words that are translated miracle, it's literally the word for force or power. And one definition, I really like it. It's just simply this, what, what is, what is miracle, a miracle? A miracle is, is the force of God. It is the power that makes possible. That's what a miracle is. A miracle is a manifestation of the power that makes possible. It's not magic, I'm sure. Some of the most technical, brilliant minds among us, a few millennia from now, that are believers, will begin to understand like they never thought they could how these things work because there's an understanding of how they work. It's not magic. It's real. And yet, when you don't understand how it works, all you can do is say, glory to God. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> but what it is, is it's God's power, His force, His power that makes possible spirit power manifesting in the physical realm. And God's power manifesting in the physical realm means what wasn't possible in the physical realm now becomes possible because this is the spirit power that makes possible. So you're not governed and limited by death, by natural rules, law, gravity, or time. Because the one who made all this can intervene in it, out of it, around it, through it. Well, that defies the laws of physics. Where did the laws of physics come from? Who said they were set in stone? That defies the concept of space and time. And well, where where'd you get your concept from? We know so little about these and the people who act like they do are so foolish the Bible said the beginning of wisdom is the fear and reverence of the Lord do you believe that saints the, if, if you want to really know something the start of learning something is to come fall on your knees and go the great almighty <laughs> I worship you you are the beginning and the end by your hand, everything that exists came into existence. And you sustain it all, every millisecond, by your mighty power. Well, that same power, it's not so bizarre. There's something that's causing your heart to beat right now. Absolutely. Isn't it? What is it? What keeps that going? People say, well, it's... It's signals from certain regions of the brain and it's involuntary. Okay, where does it come from to get to there? <laughs> That's the great mystery. Well, yeah, it's mystery to you, not to God. <laughs> it's life. And life is spirit. That's when the spirit and the breath leaves the body, it's dead. There's no force there. Nothing to quicken the heart or the mind. But the spirit and the life still exists. I said it still exists. 
And the reason I'm keep, keep talking about this is because if we're going to have miracles, that's the only way it's going to happen is spirit power. Power you can't see and feel in this room. Spirit force will come into manifestation in this realm and change things that folks said couldn't be changed. And it can happen, so it can happen faster than you can blink your eyes. I've, I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've been around it where it was this way and faster than you can blink your eyes. It's not that way anymore. And you go, huh? What? And folks, you start glorifying God. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I can see. I can hear. <laughs> it's already beginning. I said, it's already beginning. It's already beginning. You watch and see. It's already beginning. In the services here in Branson, in the services there in Sarasota, over the internet, it's already beginning. 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 And the key, it's not that God just decided to start doing some things right now. He's never changed. He's always ready. It's that we decided to start believing some more. We, by His grace and help, we're beginning to believe the reality of God who is spirit and His things is becoming more real to us. So we're more open to it. So we're looking for it. So we're expecting it. And it shows up. He shows up. Remember uh, years ago, I was uh, teaching in healing school. And we're talking about this. God's word is medicine and life to those that find it. What does that mean? It didn't say it's like medicine. It says it is. That means when you hear it, a life healing force can come in you. Very real. Very real. Didn't the Bible say he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction? Now, if you don't believe in this, it, it won't happen for you. But if you'll be open to it and believe it. This is one of the reasons why you'll, you'll see some more spectacular things, more of them and quicker in some other places and countries in the world because they believe in spirits there. Are y'all with me? You don't have to convince them that the spirit realm is real. They grew up believing it. They're aware of it. So when you tell them that something from the spirit can manifest in the natural, they're not, they're showing you their degrees. They go, that can't happen. That case, that's just, that's bizarre. No, no. Show me the test. Show me the slide under the microscope. No, they already believe it. And if you already believe it, now they also have some manifestations of the devil that they don't need. But at least you don't have to talk them into the reality of spirit rea reality, spirit realm. I know this young man came in. I didn't know it. I, I found this out later. He and his wife came in, sat down to the back row, and he was skin and bone, skin and bone. You could tell at one time he'd been a tall, big, uh, broad-shouldered uh, guy, but he's emaciated to nothing. I, I found out later he'd had uh, cancer in the last stages of both lungs, and he, he couldn't breathe. He, he's struggling. I found out later uh, he had been bed fast and couldn't move. And they asked God for a miracle for him to get out of that bed because he knew he was going to die if he stayed there. For him to get out of that bed and get to Brother Hagin's healing school. And, and somehow God gave him the strength to get out of the bed and they drug him down there. And, but he couldn't even sit up straight. He leaned over the chair in front of him and, and he, he couldn't even raise his head. His head was down up against the, the chair. And you could hear him breathing or trying to get his breath all over the room wheezing and trying and you, you'd think it was very distracting you'd think is he going to get that next one struggling rasping but we believe all things are possible do you believe all things are possible we believe all things are possible 
And so I was talking about how powerful God's word is, that it's medicine, that it can come right into you. And just like a medicine gets in your system and starts affecting your glands and your blood and everything else, the word of God does the same thing, only with no side effects, except maybe some joy. No adverse side effects. And the Lord's my witness. You know, I wouldn't stand here and lie to you. In, in uh, about 15 minutes, he, he's not sitting up, but his eyes are looking at me. And his breathing is so much better. You can still hear him breathing, but at least you're pretty confident he's going to get that next one. You know, it's, it ceases to sound so bad. In another 45 minutes, he's sitting straight up in the chair looking at me, and you can't even hear him breathe. In another hour or so, yeah, you know, I'll go a long time. Uh, <laughs> well, now, how about this? What if I'd stop short? Because he's getting better every, uh, the further we go. In about an hour, uh, he, he said the color has come back to his face. I mean, he was so pale and ashen when they came in. And, and when, when I closed the service, I went straight to him. I want to know. I said, brother, I said, God's done something for you. He said, I feel something all inside. I feel something all inside. <laughs> and his wife, tears are running down her face over here. Tears of joy. And he looked at her. He said, I'm hungry. And she just broke out and started crying. <laughs> and she told me later, they've been feeding him with a tube for months. And he couldn't stand the sight or smell of food. And, 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 and just a, uh, after the service, they went across the street to a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> and he loaded up uh, on Mexican food and was fine. You know he must be healed. He's got to be healed. <laughs> what did that to him? What did that to him? Not something you could see or put your hand on. I didn't do it to it. What did that to him? Well, the Bible said he sent his word and healed them. Didn't Jesus say, the flesh profits nothing. The word I speak, the words I speak to you, they are, they are spirit and they are, they're not just audio uh, audible waves through the air. There's more to the Word of God than sound waves traveling through the air, bouncing off your eardrum, and you trying to discern the understanding of them. There is spirit life force Amen. in the anointed Word of God, and it can come into your flesh. Your flesh. Your brain, your mind, and your spirit, and your soul, and quicken you. That's what was happening to him. He said, I just, I feel it all inside. I feel it all inside. He said, he, what is it? What is it? I said, it's the life of God. It's the healing power of God. And that's when he said, I'm hungry. <laughs> Woo! No man or woman can do that. No, you, there's no shot or pill that can do that. Come on, are you listening to me? When there's no hope, when nothing can be done, something still can be done. All things are possible to him that believes. Somebody say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. 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 Glory to God. We're not going to be dead and we're not going to be weird. You believing with me? We're going to avoid both of those ditches. Aren't we? And we're going to get in the middle of the road and the rightly divided word of truth, if it was right for Jesus to minister this way, it's right for me and you to minister this way. 
If that's the way he did it, that's the way it's supposed to be done. That's it. There is no better way. There is no other way. If we want to get his results, we've got to do it exactly the way he did it. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians with me, please. I still hadn't given you John 3 yet, have I? John 3, you know, J Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And you know what he wanted to talk to him about? Now everybody else in Nicodemus circles said Jesus was a false prophet. And that if he was doing any miracles, it was by Beelzebub, the devil. And Jesus warned them that that was blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You don't attribute the works of God to the devil. And they were. But Nicodemus, he knew that wasn't right. He knew there was something to this. And so he comes over there after dark, when nobody can see him maybe. And uh, verse 2, he said, Rabbi, which probably none of the other Sanhedrin would have called him a rabbi. So he's being respectful. We know, when he says we, he's not talking about them. He's talking about himself. We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And that's what Jesus tried to tell them. He said, if you don't believe me, believe these works. Look at this. Blind eyes open, deaf ears open, lame walking, dead raised. Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> but they were too dishonest. But Nicodemus was an honest man. He said, no, no, no. This is God. Anybody with one eye open can see this is God. Nobody, nobody could do these miracles. You do except God be with him. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus thought they was going to talk about miracles. But Jesus wanted to talk to him about the new birth, which is a miracle. It is a manifestation of the power of God. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Is he locked in his thinking to the natural? He is. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born of water and, and, and of the Spirit. Now when babies are born, they are in an element of water. And that's the sign that the baby's coming when the water breaks. They're in this, they, they're conceived and they develop in this environment, this sphere of water. Just as real as that sphere of water is, the sphere of the Spirit is. And if you're going to see and know the kingdom of God, you've got to be born not just a natural birth, but a spiritual birth. Born of water and of the Spirit. Unless you are, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Keep reading. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Does Jesus know what he's talking about here? Yes. Say it out loud. You got flesh, you got flesh. and you got, spirit. you got spirit. Are they different? Yes. They're not the same. They're not the same. Flesh and spirit. Keep reading. Marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again. Now listen to verse 8. The wind blows where it lists and you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. This is a description of the Spirit realm. It's like the wind. You might say, well, the wind is out of the south today. The wind is out of the north. Man, if you fly, it's a big deal. If you land with the wind pushing you instead of against you when you come to the runway, you get in big trouble. You run right off the end, through the fence, be in the newspaper. <laughs> so you really need to know which way the wind is blowing. 
and land into the wind. And it can be interesting because five minutes ago when you checked, it was from over here. And by the time you get there, it's over here now. And sometimes they don't even tell you where it's from. They said it's variable <laughs> from there to here, which means it could be anywhere. And so when you feel the wind, you say, well, that wind's out of the south. Well, okay. How do you know it wasn't blowing uh, this direction and then just turn south right over there? I mean, what's pushing it? What's behind it? I felt the wind. No, you felt the, the atmosphere. What's pushing it? What's behind it? What's the force? He would say, well, it's the earth's rotation and, and gravity. You know. Okay, where'd that come from? <laughs> where'd that come from? Behind all this is spirit. I said it's spirit. Do you believe it, saints? It's spirit force. And just like the wind blows... Just like you feel a breeze across your face. You felt it. You didn't see it. How do you touch the wind? You just felt the air that was being pushed by something. You didn't feel what was pushing it. You felt what was being pushed. Well, if you can believe in that, why can't you believe there's an unseen force? Hmm? Hmm? That can affect things just like that wind affects moving that atmosphere in that air. There's more where that came from. Spirit force and life. If we're going to have miracles, which we are. We got to believe in something beyond this. And people can mock us, they can laugh at us, they can call us uneducated, unenlightened, and ignorant. One day they'll find out too. But if they wait till after this life, they can't benefit from it in this life. We're going to benefit. We already are, and we're going to benefit from this in this life. In this life. In order to get from the beginning to the end of your life and your course and run your race and finish your course and do everything that you and I are supposed to do, it's going to take some miracles. Amen. It's going to take miracles of sustenance, miracles of healing, miracles of financial provision. Come on, are you there? It's going to take miracles of favor. It's going to take something coming in from another realm and changing it and influencing it. Moving in a different direction. Remaking it. Reshaping it. And I believe these words enough to just say even though I don't understand it, if he said it's this way, it's this way. It's this way. God is spirit. He's spirit. And he's seeking for some that will worship him. Not just in the natural, not just with their head, not just with their arms and their feet, but with their spirits. Their spirits. Their spirits. Their spirits. And we see in Jesus, and we see in those that walked with him, Peter, John, we see Paul. We see in them an awareness of spiritual things, don't we? We see them coming into situations and we see them knowing by the Spirit to deal with this. Have you read the book of Acts? Almost every page it said, the Spirit said, the Spirit directed, the Spirit forbade, the Spirit would allow, the Spirit spoke. Were they aware of the Holy Spirit? Man, they were aware of the Holy Spirit every morning, every noon, every night. Holy Spirit. And then because of that, they were aware of other spiritual things. And they knew when something needed to be rebuked, or something needed to be cast out, something needed to be taken care of. They knew it. And they did it. And they didn't just live an intellectual and a physical life. 
They lived a spiritual life. Do you desire that? To not be locked in to your five physical senses and what few things you've learned in your head. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I, I think I'm closing. I didn't get half through tonight, but I believe this is what we should have done. Camp on this. No need in moving too fast. Hmm? Can you come back? You going to believe with me? Well, let's, let, let's stay on this. I said, let's stay on this. There was another time there in healing school we were talking about the power of God and talking about some of these things. And uh, a lady after the service, she walked up to the pulpit. She said, look, 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 look. I said, okay, all right. What, what? She said, you don't understand. I'd had a stroke. This whole side of my body didn't work. I hadn't been able to write or even hold anything in that hand for I forget how long she said and she said, she said, look here. She said, I took all these notes. Look, look, look. <laughs> and she said, now how, does, how do I look? How do I look? I said, you look fine to me. She said, I am fine. Look, look. Because <laughs> apparently I had that side of her face, you know, like one side was working, the other side wasn't. And she'd had a stroke, I think it was. And, and man, she looked perfectly normal. Oh, Just like that, sitting in the chair. She came in. With those problems, she left without them. What did that? What did that? Now, you know, I know there's a lot of people who go, ah, I don't know about all that. That's just that mind over matter stuff. No, we're not talking about any of that. We're talking about a real living God who created everything. And if he created everything with this spirit, life, and force, why couldn't it change something? The same power that created it could change it. And Jesus said, and I'm going with him, that the, the factor, the determining factor was our faith. That's what he said. And I found out that faith comes by hearing. And so I want a whole lot more faith in this area. So I'm going to preach about it and preach about it and preach about it. And I want you to help me and believe with me. And I'm going to hear it and you're going to hear it. Come on, are you listening? And you watch and see in these services, the same thing will happen. People will go, look, 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 look. You watch. Same thing. People will go, glory to God. Glory to God. So if you hear that, don't get excited, don't get scared. Something good's going on. Something good is going on. <laughs> First Corinthians two. Verse 4, Paul said, when I came to you, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I didn't try to impress you, he said, with my knowledge, my wisdom. But I came and it was in what? Demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Somebody say demonstration, demonstration. Of, the spirit of the Spirit and power. And power. Come on, say it again. Demonstration, demonstration of the Spirit and power. power. I'm impressed of the Spirit right now for us to ask for this. Is it the will of God? Are we reading out of the New Testament? Everybody said out loud, Father God, Father God we're, asking you we're asking you to give us, to give us demonstrations, demonstrations of, the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit 
and of power. Any way you want to. Your will be done. But we're asking for it. Give us demonstrations of your Holy Spirit and the power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So be it. So be it. So be it. He said, why? Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in what? In the power of God. Their faith wasn't just in how smart Paul was. They had firsthand experience in the reality of the Spirit of God manifesting in those meetings and in those services. They had firsthand experience in the power of God. So they didn't just believe because Paul had faith and knew some stuff. Their faith was in what? Not just in a man. Not just in their preacher. Their faith was in the power of God. Somebody say, I have faith. faith. In the power of God. God. I have faith. faith. In the power of God. I believe in the power of God. I believe it's real. I believe it can do anything. And if somebody says, well, you're one of them, you go, you got that right. I'm I'm a leader of one of them. I'm <laughs> and that's the people that get the miracles. He said, we, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, not the princes of this world that come to nothing. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Are there evil spirits? Is there a devil? Do they seek to influence things on their earth? And when they do, how does it show up? How does it show up? You hear these people say, you know, something just came over me and told me to go shoot all those people. Hmm? And folks just want to make it all mental. Well, sure, there were some mental things going on, but there are spiritual influences. Spirit influencing the mind and the emotions. And the the way people get that far out is they start yielding and they just keep yielding and keep yielding and keep yielding and things get more and more bizarre and confusing. People say, well, no, no, now, you know, there are are genetic markers and these things are inherited. Even if they are, the power of God can change them. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. You can get somebody that is totally messed up. And if you'll get them to open their heart and sit under the Word of God and be in the presence of the Lord and where the Spirit is moving, they can be completely free. They can be a changed person. They can become a different man, a different woman. Don't tell me they can't. How about this boy writhing over there having a seizure? Is he a different man? How about that woman bent over and straightened up? Is she free? Well, if that can happen, this can happen. Same thing, same thing, same thing. But you've got to believe in the reality of a spirit realm, of a spirit world. He said, none of those princes, they can do some stuff. They knew a few things, but they're not even in the the same solar system with God intellectually and understanding wise. The Bible said, he that sits in the heavens laughs at them. He looks and sees what the devil is scheming and planning, and you know what his response is? He thinks that's going to work. How many times do we have to do this? <laughs> keep, keep going. As it's written, eye has not seen nor ear heard. Now, could this have to do with some things that are spirit? If you didn't see it with your eye, you didn't hear it with your ear. And if you're limited to the physical realm, 
If all you're looking at is in the physical, it didn't even come into your heart. You had no concept of it. The things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Do you love Him? Yes. Has He got some amazing things prepared for us? Yes, he does. But God has revealed them. Hallelujah. Them what? Those amazing things that I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard. He's, he is, has revealed them to us. Somebody say, He's revealed them to us. Yes. By what means? By His Spirit. You're not going to figure them out with your head. It only comes by revelation. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with Spiritual. Spiritual things are not figured out. God doesn't do it that way. All the revelation that you've ever heard me preach, I will tell you freely, I did not figure it out. If you heard it and you went, glory to God, that's good. Let me make it real clear. I did not figure that out. I was doing the best I knew to do what the Lord told me to do. Look at, study, find, pray, whatever. And he reached in and said, look at this. <laughs> and when he did, I shouted just as big as you because I, I, I didn't figure it out. He gave it to me. He gave it to me. His spirit reveals it to you. And spiritual things are connected to spiritual things. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. But what? Verse 14. The natural man does what? The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? They are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are. If you're going to be a natural man. And you are not going to acknowledge anything that you can't see and feel and touch and explain with natural law. Then all these things will be foolishness to you. And you cannot know them. You'll never get them. Because they're, they're how, how are they discerned? Spiritually. You, you, you can't get it with your imagined Superior intellect. I don't care how many degrees you got, how, how many languages you speak. That's nothing compared to God's knowledge and understanding. And he gives his precious things to people who treasure them. To people who actually believe what he says. Actually believe in him. Hmm? You going to call God a myth? You going to make fun of his Bible and talk about that it's stories that are made up, that are inconsistent and... and, and do you believe that the water actually turned to wine? Somebody literally walked on the water. Come on, come on. Give virgin birth. You're not going to tell me you actually believe that. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We believe it's just as real as this chair right here and more so because it all came from the same source. Yes, we do. Some of them would go, I pity you, bunch of fools, <laughs> religious fanatics. Don't pity us. We're having more fun than anybody else on the planet. We're doing better than most people you ever saw. Hmm? And when everybody else is throwing up their hands and crying their eyes out and saying there's no hope, we don't do that. We stand up and go, there is a God. There is a healer. There is a way. We can get a miracle. We can. We can, and it can happen quicker and easier than anybody thought. We don't have to make it happen. All we got to do is believe. believe. That's all we got to do. Believe it's real. Believe it can happen. Believe it's his will. Believe he can do it. 
Man, look at some of these healings in here. Read, read them over again and see how quick and easy. Remember those blind men that came? Oh, Jesus, help us. Please have mercy on us. Please have mercy on us. Please. He, said, he said, do you believe I'm able to do this? They said, yeah. He said, receive your sight. Boom, they could see. Huh? Just, just like that. Do you believe this can happen? They said, yeah, yeah, that's why we're here. He said, well, then receive your sight. And it said they could see. So they received their sight. He said, receive your sight. And it says, so they received their sight. How long did that take? Can that kind of thing still happen today? Come on, say, can it still happen today? Can it still happen today? Not for everybody, but it can for believers. I said it can for believers. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. So when you hear people mocking and scoffing about this, you know what they are. They are merely natural people. They are not spiritual, and so they are completely unaware of anything spiritual, which means they live a life about as shallow as a thimble, thinking they're so smart when they're so unaware. I want to be aware. I said, I want to be aware. I want to be aware of the one that makes the sun shine. I want to be aware of the mighty Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I want to be aware of what's really going on, what's really behind things and causing them and how to deal with them and how to not, how to not mess around with the symptoms for 10 years when you can go straight to the cause. Come on, are you listening? Straight to the cause and get it fixed now. Now. Now, and live free and give all the glory to God. I can't do it. You can't do it. He can. He can. And all we got to do, Jesus, did Jesus say it or not? Did, did he say, all things are possible to him that believes. He said, but he that is spiritual, glory to God, do you, are you going to say he's talking about us now? The natural man can't even see it, can't even know it. It's all foolishness to him. Can't get it. But he that is spiritual. Somebody raise your hand. Come on. Who's he talking? He that is spiritual. The, the King James says judges. That's the word for discern. Discerns all things, yet he himself is discerned of no man. The more you walk in this, you will be aware of so much stuff that people are not aware you're aware of. Phyllis laughs about things. She'll come to me. I don't know how many times she says. She said, they think they have you fooled. <laughs> I said, I know. <laughs> you don't need to say everything you know or everything you see. But spiritual people see a lot of things that unspiritual people have no clue that they're seeing and knowing. And it, I'm telling you, I, the, what little I've learned about it, I want to learn more. How many believe Jesus was completely aware? Man, he, hmm? When things were, how many know sometimes the Bible said he knew what they were thinking? Didn't say he guessed what they might be thinking. He knew exactly what they were thinking. Somebody said, well, he's the son of God. No, the Bible said he's operating as a man. He said himself, I can of myself do nothing. That's what he said. Whatever the Father shows me, whatever the Father tells me, that's what I say. Can we do that? Can we do what the Father shows us and tells us? That's why it's possible for us to have the same kind of works He had, by the same Spirit, by the same means. He that is spiritual judges all things, discerns all things, yet he himself is discerned of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? I'd say absolutely nobody would say, Lord, I'm going to tell you something you don't know. I need to teach you on this a little bit. <laughs> you know, I've met some people I think would try. <laughs> but no, no one has ever instructed him. But, everybody said out loud with me. We have the mind of Christ. Woo, 
glory to God. Isn't that exactly what we were just talking about? The mind of Christ enlightened by the Spirit, how he was aware of all these things all the time. Sometimes people have pulled that out of context, but what the, what's this whole passage talking about? Discerning spiritual things, being aware of spiritual things, and having the mind of Christ is being aware of the realities of the Spirit all around you. The Holy Spirit, what He's saying, what He's doing, wrong spirits, problems they're causing, what needs to be done with them, human spirits, what's going on with them. Instead of just going, isn't that a pretty top they got on? <laughs> and that's as far as you go. That's all you know. I saw them come in. I saw them leave. Sure is hot today. Or it's cold. How many think that's too shallow? <laughs> too, too shallow. That that's all you're aware of. It's what you can perceive with these muted senses. No. No, say it with me real loud. I have, I have the, enlightened the enlightened spiritual discerning, spiritual discerning. Mind, of Christ. mind of Christ. Yes, I do. Yes, I stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, glory to God.